And we're here with the best pound for pound fighter in the world, Terrence Crawford, who's already in a fighting mood. Like I'm sitting here with him at commercial break. No matter what I say, he's got to contradict it. I mean, you do that anyway, but that's right. I notice, especially right before your fights, you do that. Where's that come from? This is just who I am. You know, we debating over some something that you can't uh, relate to. That's it. I mean, we were talking about weights and how I liked it in the old days when they weighed in day of the fight because they had to come in at the right weight and they wouldn't cancel fights and be way over. And you said, how would you know you didn't fight? Right. Right. So it's, so it's that I didn't fight and that bothered you or anything anyone says bothers you <clears throat> right before a fight? No, that bothered me because you haven't, you know, took, took the initiative to go in a six-week, seven-week camp, lose weight, and then weigh in the same day that you had to fight. Like you like boxers, it better this way? Of course. Boxers go through a lot, and it's uh, uh, less risky at the same time. You think it's less risky? Of course. We'll, we'll get into that subject another time. We'll debate that another time. Um, meantime, you have a title defense coming up tomorrow night at Madison Square Garden on top of an excellent card. It's being heavily promoted on ESPN, obviously, and um, uh, he's your mandatory <coughs> contender. But as is, has been the case throughout your welterweight career, what's being written and said about it is, man, Terrence Crawford's going to beat this guy up. This guy shouldn't be in the ring with Terrence Crawford. What does that mean? Are you complimented by the fact that people consider you that much better? Are you annoyed by the fact that somehow you won't get enough credit for beating him up? Like, what does that do to you when you hear that stuff? It still motivates me because I still got a job to do come Saturday. But at the same time, I don't listen to those people that say those type of things because they really don't know uh, a thing about boxing or a thing about my opponent that I'm fight facing this weekend because he's not very known in the United States. What do you know about your opponent tomorrow night, Kavliaskis? Well, I know he's a two-time Olympian, and you can't be no bum being a two-time Olympian. I know that's amateurs, but, you know, I didn't make it to the Olympics, so, uh, you know, he, he, he got some type of experience behind his belt, and he's strong. He's very strong, he's durable, and uh, he can fight a little bit. He can fight a little bit. What, have you been watching tape? Uh, not really. I, I've had the pleasure of seeing him fight in person a few times, more than, more than once. So I've been up close in person to uh, be able to see him fight live. Mm -hmm. And what did you think when you saw him? I thought he was a strong fighter. You know, he does some great things in the ring. You know, he, he's, he's smart. You know, he faints. You know, he's not the fastest guy, but he can punch, you know, and that's what one thing that you got to look out for. In his, in his fight against Ray Robinson, and I'm not talking Sugar Ray Robinson, he got a draw. He's the mandatory. He's supposed to look good in that fight. He's got to convince people, like, that he can give Terrence Crawford a fight, and he gets a draw. But since then, apparently, he has said things like, um, Crawford's going to fight us. Right? Like, I, this is a guy who's going to come to fight. He's not going to be running around or trying to... Does that mean you oblige him by fighting him because you're an offensive-minded fighter? Or does that mean that you know that he wants you to do that so you go to your boxing? Listen, me personally, uh, I'll fill, my, fill him out come fight night. And if I feel I need to box him, I box him. If I feel I need to take it to him and stand toe to toe, I'll do that too. Uh, like I said, I got an all around game. I don't, I'm not one dimensional. So there's a lot of things that I can do in, in the ring and this week it will show. You were on first take earlier in the week and Teddy Atlas was sitting where you're sitting, I was sitting right there and he called you the, the most instinctual fighter he's ever seen, which is like, what? That, there have been a hundred plus years of boxing. People have seen a million guys. I could, I, so very hate. rare for an old timer, for a guy who's been around for a while to say a guy who's presently fighting has the best instincts he's ever seen. What does that mean to you? So you hating because you don't agree with him. See, that's your pre-fight attitude, right? I'm there. just saying, you I, don't I, agree. Who said I didn't agree with him? I didn't tell you if I agreed or not. Well, you you talking like you don't. Well, no. I Do you I, agree no. with him? 
Do I agree? I'd have. I think that you are among them. You have great instincts. I would have to think about whether you're the. I mean, Wilfred Benitez had incredible. There are lots of guys with great instincts. Right. That's why I'm saying it's like when you when you single a guy out and say the best, and you're and you're skipping over a hundred plus years of fighters. That's not hating, brother. That's just real. But he said that about you. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah, it just tells where where my skill level at and. You know, instincts is something that you can't teach. You know, it's just something that's inside you, and it just happened off the fly when, you, you know, you're inside the ring. And I just think it's, it comes from repetition, repetition over and over and over. You're just doing things, and sometimes you do things without even knowing that you're doing it. And that's what Teddy was talking about, that you switch up without knowing you're doing it, stuff like that. When people call you like he's the best switch hitter maybe ever, because as, as has been pointed out, and we were here when Teddy said it, Hagler really fought out of a... I, we disagree about that. I saw Hagler switch plenty. But he basically fought out of a southpaw stance for the most part, whereas you really switch it up. Is that meaningful to you? Are you a guy who just says, oh, next fight, let me beat this guy up, next fight, let me beat this guy up? Or does your legacy and the way people think of you, like, you know, 50 years from now, they'll be saying, you know who's the best guy who switched up ever? Terrence Crawford. Is that meaningful? Uh, I think that's what they uh, say when my career is uh, all done and, and over with. They will say Terrence Crawford is the best switch hitter. I don't think nobody in the sport of boxing have uh, done what I've done in switching. That's just simple, period. Uh, Marvin Hagler, uh, whoever. You know, I don't think nobody fought to the the level of of the caliber that I've been fighting at. You know, I can box Southpaw, I can bang Southpaw, I can box Orthodox, I can bang uh, Orthodox. Normally when a person not fighting his normal stance, he gives up something, you know, and I don't feel like I'm giving up anything when I switch. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.